hi everyone so um i look a little bit worse for wear this morning but it is because i just had a really disturbed sleep i'm feeling really anxious feeling really nervous um i'm flying to turkey today um for an operation on my bladder so to cut long story short i'm doing this video because i get a lot of questions about my journey with it um and hopefully like this can probably help some girls out there who are going through a similar thing so <coughs> I've been suffering with a chronic UTI for about four years and I've tried every single thing there is to know in terms of traditional medicine, antibiotics, I've had all the different procedures and nothing's ever worked. So I've literally like had the symptoms of a UTI for almost four years, which has been really hard. I did manage to get it kind of under control to a manageable state and then since i gave birth it's just been hell like actual hell majority of the time no one really sees what i go through because i do hide it away but yeah it's been a really hard year um it's literally almost been one full year where i've lived in chronic pain so <clears throat> i recently came across a um a procedure called fulguration which is basically a very scary procedure for someone who has bladder pain like me um but i'm willing to try anything now because i've tried everything so i just feel like this is like the last step i feel really nervous because i don't know anyone who's had this done in the uk um i have heard of it being done but i just don't know anyone personally who has tried it so yeah i'm very nervous i'm very scared but i'm going to document the whole thing so that everyone can kind of see the journey that i go on i know it's not going to be easy and i know it's going to be really painful but it's something that i've got to try i've got to try everything so yeah i'll keep you posted Mwah. Oh, Morning. So this is the hotel. It's actually really nice. I got a joining room for my mom. My mom and Casey have a lit. I need to hold it more like that. Don't you come and see? Um, my mom and Casey. I look so rough. I got to the back to the hotel, and I ended up having a burger and a Snickers, which wasn't the best idea. I feel really bloated today, but um, going to meet my doctor today just to talk everything through. I'm feeling really nervous, really anxious. Like I know this is going to be a painful procedure, but. I need to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. They say the recovery should take up to six weeks, but you should only really be in pain for around a week. So it's probably going to be the worst week of my life, but the long run, hopefully this is going to pay off. And yeah, so we're going to head to the hospital. I'm going to get ready, put a bit of makeup on and head to the hospital. <laughs> I'm with Dr. Serving. Hello. Hi. Hi, and Marnie is here. Marnie's mum is there, Sharon. And would you like to explain? Yes, we are trying to find out what's the reason of chronic cystitis in Marnie. So uh, there are some women who had cystitis for a long time and they use antibiotics. And when they use antibiotics, it heals for some period and then it comes back. Uh, we see in cystoscopy some different tissue, differentiated tissues. We call them leucoplakias. These are, leuco is white in uh, Latin. So leucoplakia is a white plaques. So uh, there are uh, white plaques in some people. Uh, then, then, then they have chronic cystitis. We will, uh, two days later, after the tests for COVID, we will 
look to Marnie's bladder if there's any local plaque here. Mm -hmm. If there is, we will remove them and we hope the chronic cystitis will finish, will mm -hmm. go away. Mm -hmm. And I want to see with uh, ultrasound if I can see these local tissues. Yeah. And now I see that in the midline here, there is what we call hyperechoic, hyperechoic it, tissues. It's slightly risen, isn't it? Like Yes, it's like a... So that? Yes. Okay. So this is different than normal tissues, some whitish hyperechoic tissue. You can see it's white on that even in... Yes, well, already ultrasound is grey and white and this is more white than the other white. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty to me. It's thicker. Yes, and it is thicker, yes. Mm. It's thicker, so I believe uh, I can see that mm -hmm. tissue here. Mm. We'll see if you don't mind. Yes, yes, please. Yes, I see this tissue here and... Uh, if we really can find this tissue yeah. inside, and I am pretty sure, before we talked, uh, we chatted, and I, I'm sure you are the best candidate yeah. for this, because this is this happens in women who had cystitis from their teenage yeah, that was, ages. That's me. And, uh, I've had it since I was 17, on and off. I think maybe even younger. Yes. So it's a very chronic situation, and the, the bacteria which go inside the bladder uh, makes it tissue deformation inside the bladder. It's very normal. If you have some bacteria in your mouth, you will have tissue degeneration or deformation. Like plaque? Is it like plaque? Or? Yes, like a plaque. Well, yeah. You've yeah. actually yeah. had it since you were 30. So, you know, so if you do get a, a UTI, is it harder? Does the bacteria stick to that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The bacteria stick to that tissue. When you have antibiotics, it goes away, but the plaque back. still stays yeah. there. Yeah. Because uh, it's very difficult for bladder to heal because it always has acidic fluid in yeah. it, and it makes always a um, tissue, uh, yes, tissue uh, reaction. It's like if you have a scar, because yes. it's like it's dry, it'll just flake yes. off. But in there, if you have a scar in your hand and you every day you go, go to a sea and uh, yeah, or swimming pool, yes, just, yeah. your scar will never heal. So you have to stop it somewhere, yeah. it has to dry away, yeah, but uh, in, your, in bladder it's impossible. So uh, we will take out these tissues and uh, bacteria will find no place to hold. Uh, okay, we will see in the operation uh, better, yeah. but I believe there is yeah. a tissue I saw with, with ultrasound. This is not a perfect uh, diagnostic criteria. Yeah, and uh, in literature, in radiology and urology literature, there is no, nothing about this diagnosis. Okay. It is not proven, but in my practice, yeah. I saw many cases. You know what to look for. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, when I look with ultrasound, I see here... Can we point out one more time? Is that yes. okay? yeah. Here is the urethra. Uh -huh. And the infection always happens just near the urethra. Okay. And here, I can see that there are whitish tissues. It doesn't look normal, does it? Yes. This is a thick tissue, more echoic. Here it's obvious. Like oh. this white tissues. Yes, this is it. Well, uh, but it is not accepted by any radiologist in the uh -huh. guidelines. This is a new concept. I'm uh, making uh, research about it. I'm trying to prove it. And you are a candidate for me. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> yes. So you, you will be in my research group. Definitely. Cool. What's going on, guys? We're currently in Live Hospital. Marnie's just had our appointment with Dr. Savin and uh, Sharon and Marnie. So they they have to run a COVID test. Um, she's also going to get a X-ray here. They're going to check her lungs, um, which I think is really good. And she's going to get a COVID test done her throat and two noses. I don't want it. But she has to. So it's good. Yeah. So Yes, you're going to be fine, Marnie. We're going to, why am I so tanned compared to you two? <laughs> why am I so ugly? I look like that. Yeah, it might be uh, because you're Italian. Probably. Yeah. Anyway, wish her luck, guys, and we'll give you a little update after. Right, guys, she's just had her COVID test, and please look at her. Look what it does. <laughs> so, no one tells me that 
tells you how bad they are, that was horrendous. I'm gonna well, have to I, literally take my lashes off. I'll be honest, I knew how bad it was, but I didn't want to tell her. I told, I told Sharon, didn't I, Sharon, when, yeah. she, when she left. I said I didn't want to worry her, but I know it hurts. But it's good that they're doing like all the precaution. Mm. I think. I just really want to say what an amazing hospital. It looks so cool. Like they're doing all the tests. Like I don't think I've had these tests before. No. Like when I'm getting operations, so it's really good mm -hmm. precaution. We're happy, aren't we, Sharon? Yeah. Just, I would recommend Turkish hospitals, they're mm. amazing. So far, Clean. so good. Clean. Everyone seems really friendly. Um, I'm going to put the camera down now because I feel like Marnie is struggling with our <laughs> eyes. Uh, we'll see you in a bit. So, we have just came for some dinner. We had a massage as well. Mum? Oh my god, it was the best. <laughs> Me mum really enjoyed our massage. Now we're going to have some sushi. And please look at the view. This is definitely what you want before an operation, so I'm not complaining. Um, it's been a very nice, chilled, relaxed day. Did a bit of shopping and yeah, chilled. How do you feel? Fantastic. Amazing. Amazing. Talk. What are you talking about? Right, it's the morning of Marnie's operation. I want to ask you a few questions. How do you feel? There's Sharon. Nervous. Genuinely though, I think it's gonna be great. Like, I just hope that he finds what he thinks it is. He thinks it's scar tissue. Well, if you look at the old video that we done, he actually done an ultrasound and said that it looked very similar, didn't it? To mm. other girls with leukoplakia, yeah. so. Hopefully, 100%. It's gonna, it's gonna yeah. go. Remember though, you're gonna have a bit of pain after and the recovery can be up to six weeks, so. Yeah. But we're well, very proud of you and we love you so much, Marnie. You. You're gonna be fine. Yeah. You're she also she also hasn't had water since twelve last night because of the anaesthetic. Yeah, I'm really thirsty, really hungry. You're gonna be alright though, trust me. All right, we'll give you a little update when we're in the hospital, guys. In the room. It's actually really big. So it's really I don't know why I'm documenting. I need to film <laughs> you and you need to talk. Right. I just can't believe how big it is. It's a really nice room. So far. But where's your bed? I don't mind. <laughs> it's not about me. That I'll probably pull out. So, oh, we have a TV. We have a we have a TV in the wall. Okay, we have a bathroom. The bathroom should be in here. Ooh, we've got a shower. Oh my, it's luxury. We have a shower. It's more like a hotel. It's like a hotel. So here we are, and then yeah. So Marnie, I want to sit on the bed. I want to ask you a few questions. I'm not even joking. Right. Have a nap. How do you feel? I can't get over how like luxury this hospital is. It is beautiful. It's clean. The staff are amazing. Like you wouldn't look at this room. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. But you know what though? You're gonna be fine. The last yeah. hurdle's done. We've just signed the paperwork, haven't we? All the paperwork's yeah. done. I'm just nervous about being put to sleep. I'm really scared. Mm. You're gonna be okay though, Molly. Honestly, it's this. Like I said, this operation, I think guys. I'm more scared of the recovery than yeah. the actual operation. But like you said, just to fill people in, the operation isn't actually that long. No. It's about 35, 40 minutes. Um, but obviously. I think because it's just all done there. Yeah. It's not the best. Is mm. it? But you're gonna be okay. Honestly. I've been this far, so. Yeah. And you've, you've, you've honestly, you could change loads of girls' lives, okay? I love you. I love you. Right, peace out. Okay, so Marnie has just woken up um, from the vulgaration. She's here now. Do you want to explain how you feel right now? It's, it's painful, it's burning, like really burning. Yeah. Dr. Savink said that it was normal to burn after and other patients that we have spoken to before Marnie getting this operation. Um, but she's been really brave. I love you. Yeah, I knew, I knew it was going to burn. Yeah, but the burning won't last. It's the, she's just had vulgaration of the bladder, so it's going to burn. Yeah. But as I said... I don't like having a catheter in. I hate yeah. catheters. But with the explain that you have to have a catheter in, obviously, because she won't be able to control her wee for now. Um, we've been told that in two hours she should start to feel a lot better than what she is now. Um, she but just needs some pain relief. Yeah, and also on my next video, we're probably going to show Dr. Savink explaining what he found in Marnie's bladder. Um, he texted me when Marnie was, well, he sent me videos, sorry, not text me, when Marnie was under. We'll um, share the videos. Yeah, we'll share the videos, and there, there, there definitely was 
well, I'll let him explain. I'm not a doctor, yeah. but <laughs> we'll let him explain. But I'm just happy that Marnie's back. Um, and you've been really brave. I love you. I love you. So much. Right. Um, take care, guys, and we'll give you updates. So, I am. Um, I've just woke up and I'm in pain. <sighs> I'm having some pain relief. Um, I just feel like this is just, just a horrible thing to have to go through, but I know it's, it's going to be worth it. Do you want to update him what Dr. Smith said about it? It's 100% sure. So he found, doc, the doctor found what was causing the problem. Um, my bladder was so sensitive that even to the touch it would bleed. Literally a touch. That's because all of the tissue was damaged. It wasn't, it wasn't healthy tissue. No, he literally did. He touched it. Literally poked it. He poked one side of your bladder, and it was fine. And then he poked the bit yeah. that was inflamed, and it was bleeding. Yeah, the bit that he said was bad is the actual bit that I could feel the pain at as well. Well, that's where the wee sits. That's where the urine sits. So I'm just, I just want to get the next 24 hours over with, so I can get back to the hotel and start the proper recovery. I just don't like having a catheter in. I think I'm absolutely petrified of catheters. Um, but it needs to be in for recovery. Yeah. So I'll keep you all posted on how I am tomorrow. So it's been a few hours since I've had the operation and I'm feeling a lot better. The pain has died down. I mean, I know I look like absolute shit, but I feel a lot better. Just can't wait to get the catheter out and head back to the hotel in the morning. Can I? Casey's bed for the night. Hello. Splitting headache, but I can't complain. Oh, you've got a headache. <laughs> That's what I just said. I can't complain. Filling up my water. Hi, guys. So, just had my catheter removed. Wasn't looking forward to that. And it was... It didn't feel nice at all. But it was over very quick. Then I've just had my first wee. Which, I'm not going to lie, it did hurt. Very, very stingy it's more like a sting like a cut rather than the usual uti pain which i've had for the past year this is more like a, like a soreness um yeah just can't wait for the next um couple of weeks of healing so i can just try and be back to normal hopefully but yeah oh god this has been like it's been hard but i'm hoping it's gonna be worth it so we are leaving the hospital we're leaving live hospital right now it's mm -hmm. been really good service really I'm, good service I, I, um, I was genuinely a bit like i'm shocked I, at how yeah how smoothly it's gone i can't even believe i'm walking yeah. out this hospital okay like i yeah. generally thought i'd be in agony so did i um it's hurting when i'm going the way but it's just more of a stingy like soreness not like a uti not pain, like but a, at the moment it's too early to, yeah it's very early so i'm just gonna see how the next couple of weeks bring us he said it can be very up and down the recovery but hopefully i'll get there but i can't even explain how amazing the service has been at this hospital it's been unbelievable um like words can't even describe so it is day two and we've came to the hospital just to have a catch up with the doctor um i want to ask him questions about the precautions that i need to take now when i'm recovering I've been in a little bit of pain today, very stingy when I'm going to the toilet. But yeah, I just want to see what he what he has to say, really. But yeah, just waiting for him. I think he's going to give you antibiotics, isn't he? He's going to give us me antibiotics and my prescription. Um, but yeah, day two, so far so good. Just a little sore, but yeah. So what, do you think that my bladder will be back to normal? Like, do you think it could be a normal bladder again? Yeah, I I see all the bladder was normal except this trigotrigon, uh -huh. uh, which our infected tissues changed. Yeah. Tissue changed, uh, but the rest of the bladder was completely normal. Right, that's that good. means when the tissue heal, all all bladder will be normal yeah. and you will feel everything normal again. Okay, thank God for that. I'm just scared about it ever happening again. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, just be careful and just. Yes, when you'll be careful for uh, what I warn you. Uh, like, no sex. Um, what about swimming pools? 
No, no, that's not a problem, but uh, you have to go to peeing after a uh, swimming pool. Right. Very, very quickly. Uh, so drink a lot of water okay. when you go to swimming pool. So you will need to go to the toilet as soon as... Uh, um. so, so if there is any contamination from the pool, right. uh, you, you will push it back. Yeah. So makes sense. And eating wise, is yeah. there anything she has to do eating? Eating about eating spicy foods and coffee is the uh, <laughs> worst the enemies of us. Mm -hmm. right. So it's only when in the healing period. Okay. After the healing period, six weeks, it's fine. Uh, everything is normal. But uh, try to be normal at everything. Okay. Do not do anything extreme. Right. Uh, when somebody looks to your food, uh, your diet, it has to be normal. Normal. Uh, nothing is forbidden okay. completely. You can eat spice, you can have a coffee. But just not every day. Yes, and not extreme. Okay. For example, uh, it's normal to have a cup of coffee or two cup of coffee a day. Yeah, it's normal. Not like but sometimes people love coffee. I drink coffee. Like like, like Sharon, our mother. <laughs> she loves coffee. Can I can I also ask? Um, yeah. What was the reason for her having this? Why 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 yeah. did she have this? Some girls are prone to get this kind of infection from their childhood. It begins. So they it's a build up. Yes. Yeah. From the, they have they have a lot of discharge, mm -hmm. and uh, when they grow up, the discharge normal vagina discharge go into bladder. Right. And uh, it's always related to uh, sexual relations too. Yeah. Uh, after in in every woman, the urethra of the women are short. Yeah. And it's uh, the bacteria goes in, but they cannot stick into anywhere in bladder, and they thrown away with the uh, pee. Yeah. Uh, but in some women, like uh, me. Yes, from the childhood, it is uh, we know who will have this disease. Right. They, the child, child, even they are a child. Uh, some girls have too much vaginal discharge. Right. So these are candidates for this infection. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, what do they have to do? The most important thing is drinking a lot of water just yeah. after sex. Right. Uh, if you go to the toilet frequently after sex that night, you can get rid of this infection. So right. you will. Uh, they have to uh, be careful about this. Nothing else. So if she carried on going, though, if she didn't have this, would it get worse and worse in yeah. future? At least at six months, you have to be very careful about this. Okay. When everything is normal, you feel normal. Do not uh, try to be to do something special. Okay. But, uh, for six months, be really be careful. Take it easy. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to cut off? Yeah, yeah. And the healing uh, at healing period, uh, you every day you will feel better, 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 and someday you will feel a little worse. Right. Don't uh, panic. <laughs> Please <laughs> so tell her that again. Because, because she worries. Yeah, because it is like. Uh, there is some healing to For example, if you have some scar tissue in your hand, it covers uh, just the healing tissue covers, and then it drops. Yeah. And a little bleeding happens in this uh, right, tissue. Right, right, so right, it is right. same in bladder. There is always acid in the urine, mm -hmm. and uh, in the healing, the tissue may drop, uh, especially at the third week. Right. Uh, so there may be a little coming okay. back, but it will heal quickly. Okay. And uh, we use uh, British carbonate. <laughs> if you know that. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> British carbonate. It is something to uh, decrease the acidity of uh, your urine. Soda. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's very nice. If we, in pharmacy in Turkey, you can find this. And but you just put it in your water. And you uh, drink yes. It. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this carbonate is helpful. To, it, it makes your urine more alkaline. basic, alkaline, alkaline. and uh, so you will feel less pain. Right. If you have, I will make a prescription yeah, for you. Perfect. If you have such type of uh, pain, you can use it, okay. and it makes your acid more uh, alkaline. And uh, I want you to use antiseptics, not antibiotics, but antiseptics in the healing period okay. for six weeks. Okay. Every week, one. Uh, one uh, cup of uh, you I will give some some special drug you will put in the Look, morning here the tissue is different this is normal leather mucosa but here the tissues are different so these all this place is problematic all the tissue here is different 
when we look at the normal mucosa, there is nothing abnormal. Here, tissue is different. So guys, this is the operation video. I just thought I'd do a little voiceover. As you can see, majority of my bladder is completely normal. As he says, it is just the trigone that was full of trigonitis, which he then removes, leaving a scab to heal and for new tissue to grow. I just wanted to post this video so you can actually see what was done and what was performed. I just hope that this gives you an insight into what was actually done during the operation. The problem is here, in that part. These are the abnormal tissues. So this is him about to fulgurate using the laser, which is extremely hot. As you can see, my bladder is very, very sore to the touch, which is abnormal. It should not bleed when you touch it like that. This was what was causing all of my pain. So this tissue needs to be removed so new healthy tissue can then grow. This is very fragile tissue here. So it is permeable to the acid and completely stable. I coagulate the tissue and push back the superficial part. So the superficial abnormal the abnormal tissue has gone. I want to be as deep as possible to get rid of all abnormal cells and tissue. But if I follow it too deep, the healing period will be over. And there will be too much pain. Here normal tissue begins. Just to be safer, I treat a little from the normal part. As you can see, it is bleeding, that's completely normal. This is what happens in the process of fulguration. All of the white stuff is basically the scab, and that is completely normal. So we have to mark our margins. Now it's better to mark here. The abnormal pressure is here. As you can see, he's looking around the rest of my bladder. You can see my urethras, which is where the kidneys are connected to. They're completely normal. All of the tissue surrounding them is fine, which I'm very fortunate about. Now what the surgeon is doing is he's marking the bladder so he knows exactly where the bad tissue ends. So he knows exactly where he needs to fulgurate so that he doesn't leave any damaged tissue behind. In this case, it was impossible to, to make a, to take a sample for biopsy or urine culture because the uh, tissue planes are very thin. And the problem with the mucosa is thinner, thin. So, if I resect for biopsy or for tissue sampling for culture. There will be deep scar tissue and it will longer the healing period, it will make the healing period longer. So I didn't take any tissue samples. I just took the tissue. And as you can see, as he's pulling out of the bladder, you can see the trigone area that he has fulgurated. It is completely covered white, which is the scab that will then heal over 12 weeks. And then it'll start to renew when the bladder wall 
sheds which can take between six to nine months everyone's different everyone's immune system is different it all just depends on everyone's individual bodies i've found after four months that was when i seen the biggest difference and then I've gradually got better and be better every single day. I'm now at six months and I'm doing absolutely great. I'm 90% better and I still have a little bit left of the healing period to go. So I'm guessing I'll make a complete full recovery and I've now got my life back. So as you can see in the video, the ditch, which is the trigone, just above the entrance is completely fulgurated and that is the operation done. I'm so pleased I've done this and I hope that this helps anyone else suffering. guys it is seven days post up and just a little catch up um i didn't really do any recording on the way back because i had so much trouble at the airport but i can we turn this down oh i thought you liked this song we flew back two days after the operation which is a miracle i couldn't believe i'd done it um the first three days were definitely the hardest um in terms of like pain but it was nothing that I couldn't manage. And yeah, day four, the pain had kind of stopped when I weed. Then day five, six and seven have just progressively gotten even better. And it is officially day seven today. And I don't have any pain at all. All I have is like an itchy feeling inside my bladder. I wouldn't say it's pain. It's more like just a sensation, an itchy sensation. Like I want to scratch it. Um, which I spoke to Dr. Savink and he said that it is just the healing. It's like having a scab when they get itchy, but it'll be like that for a few weeks. But yeah, so far so good. I went and got my nails done today. I'm up and about and feeling really, really positive. Um, so yeah, I'll let, I'll let you, I'll keep you updated every seven days. So this is week one. So I'll see you at week two. So it has officially been six months since my operation and I can safely say I am around 90% better. I have gotten my life back. I don't take antibiotics anymore. I'm feeling so good, so excited for the future. I can't thank Dr. Savink enough. He basically saved my life. I was just in such a bad way um 90 percent healed and i don't take any antibiotics anymore i mean after four years of taking them i can't believe it and i would say the other 10 percent is just slightly sensitive a little bit sometimes but nothing that would prevent restrict my healed and i don't take any antibiotics anymore i mean after four years of taking them i can't believe it and i would say the other 10 percent is just slightly sensitive a little bit sometimes but nothing that would prevent restrict my day um so yeah i'm really happy with the way it went and it was a massive massive success and i'm so grateful